Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, my name is Maggie. So for those who don't know, and if you're just stumbling across today's video, I'm a full-time fashion lifestyle content creator on Instagram, and I do YouTube, and I have TikTok as well. And the video that you're watching right now is episode one of my tips and tricks on how to become an Instagram influencer or content creator, and I'm basically going to be splitting up my journey and everything that I've learned through my journey. I'm going to be splitting it up into multiple videos to help you guys learn, I guess, how to be a content creator if that's what you're interested in, and you want to somehow how make it into a side income or make it as your full-time income. So this is going to be like the intro episode. I'm going to be answering a bunch of questions that I got from you guys on my stories. I'm going to be getting into uh, the basics of how to just start. So I started my fashion blog back in October of 2018. So I had just graduated college and I was starting my job as a full-time medical device rep, but I wanted something as a hobby that I could do on the side in my free time that was kind of just like a passion project. And I've always loved fashion. So I thought it'd be really fun to create my own fashion blog and kind of document my style, the evolution of my style. I've always had my friends ask me where I got certain pieces. So I'd be able to put all of that information onto one blog. So that's what I did. So whatever content I was creating on my blog, I would go ahead and I'd post it on my Instagram page. So yeah, I started posting everything in 2018 and now it's mid February, 2021. I've grown my account to almost 50,000 followers and it's now my full-time job. Something that I did not expect. Um, I did not expect to grow to this number I didn't expect that this would be my full-time income it's honestly such a blessing and I I never intended for this to happen but it kind of just happened and I figured that this is what I love to do and if this opportunity is given to me now I would be silly not to take it so yeah so that's kind of like the short version of how I started creating content for Instagram YouTube my blog everything so if you're like me back in 2018 and you want to start posting on Instagram or you want to make a blog or you want to start a YouTube channel, first and foremost, my biggest piece of advice is to just say fuck it and do it. <laughs> Honestly, you can't care what people think. You have to do it because you love it and it's going to make you happy. And then just jump in feet first, start posting, start creating and whatnot. When becoming an Instagram content creator, influencer, whatever you want to call it. Step one would be to find your niche. You have to narrow down what you want your account or feed or blog, YouTube channel, what you want it to look like. Do you want to be a lifestyle blogger? Do you want to be a fashion content creator? Do you want to be a, like a food content creator? So once you find your niche, just start creating content and start posting. So for me, it was fashion. I would be posting all of my, you know, outfit photos, my outfit of the days. Everything that was going on my blog was going on my Instagram. I also wanted to make sure that I had an aesthetically pleasing feed because in my head the first thing that people see when they come to your your page in regards to Instagram is your feed and at least for me personally whenever I'm looking at someone's profile I the first thing that I notice is their feed how it looks and at least for me when I I can sort of figure out what the vibe and style of the content creator is immediately by looking at their feed obviously if you go into the post you'll see what type of outfit they're wearing and you kind of get a sense of their vibe that way but I in the beginning I always thought having an aesthetic feed was really helpful and I'm gonna have a whole separate video of how to create an aesthetically pleasing feed in this series so stay tuned for that okay so you have your niche you start posting, you figure out your feed, what you want your style and your vibe to be. You start creating more posts, you start gaining a little bit of a following, and then brands start reaching out to you or you start reaching out to brands. Usually in the beginning, you're gonna be the one that's doing more of the reaching out just because you're probably newer, a lot of brands might not know your name yet, which is totally fine. So when you're first starting out, you're going to want to create a media kit, which I will show you how to create in another video, and then a pitch email. So a pitch email is something that you can just send out to a bunch of of brands that you want to work with. I prefer to do email because I feel like it's a little bit more professional, but if you can't find their email anywhere, I highly suggest DMing them, definitely. So basically your pitch email, you're going to introduce yourself and you're basically going to tell a brand why you think that they should work with you. So I'm going to leave an example of a pitch email that I used in the beginning. The underlying parts are the parts of the email that you're going to fill in um, that's specific towards the brand that you're doing your outreach towards. So for every email, what I really tried to focus on was of course it had to be a brand that I truly loved and truly wanted to work with. I would make sure to, I guess, compliment the brand in some way or try to say that I feel like our styles could mesh really well together and I feel like I could create content that the brand's audience would 
relate really because our styles match so well. I feel like that's really important and understanding the style of the brand, the messaging behind the brand, what its mission statement is, I feel like is important when you're doing your outreach emails. Um, I think it's important to know about that because it shows these brands that you're really paying attention and it shows them that you really do want to work with them. So usually the people that you're reaching out to when trying to collaborate with the brand is either the PR contact or they have a social media contact. You can find these most of the time on their website. You kind of have to dig for it. I found some on LinkedIn before. I've also just asked other content creators before. If you do your digging, if you do your research, you will be able to find the emails, but usually it's just the PR contact that you'll find. Say you go to a brand's website, you usually scroll down. There's going to be like a contact us or a contact me page and so usually the email will be there. If it's not, you might have to do a little bit of digging. Another tip when sending emails, you wanna keep it short and sweet. The social contact, the PR contact, they don't have all day long to read your email. So being short, sweet, concise, and getting to the point is usually pretty important. So in the email, you're gonna to wanna to attach your media kit, which basically is like a blogger's resume. So I'm gonna have a whole separate video of how to create your own media kit. I'll show you what mine looks like, but I'll just give you a quick little rundown of what should be on your media kit. So you're gonna to wanna to have a short introduction of yourself, who you are, what you do, what kind of blogger you are. You wanna have all of your social media analytics on there, your Instagram followers, your, your Instagram insights and whatnot. If you're on other social media platforms like Pinterest, YouTube, TikTok, you're gonna to wanna to have the at least the follower numbers on there. Another thing that you're gonna want in your media kit is your engagement rate. There are so many platforms out there that, that can calculate your engagement rate for you, but there is an equation, I'll have it up here if you wanna do it yourself. But I'll also leave the link to the website that I use for my engagement rate. It's super easy. It's like not um, glitchy at all. Like I know some websites can be a little bit glitchy. This one's actually really good. So I'll leave that in the description box below. But you're gonna wanna have your engagement rate on there as well. If you have worked with other brands in the past, you're gonna wanna put those Instagram handles under previous collaborations. If you haven't worked with brands in the past, that's totally fine. The brand will still get to know you when you show them all of your work. Because if they're not going to go directly to your Instagram to get a feel for your vibe, you're gonna wanna put your best photos in your media kit so they get an understanding of who you are and what kind of content you're able to create. I also have a, my rate card in my media kit. Um, when I first started out, I did not have a rate card because I, I honestly didn't think that brands would pay me being that I only had like 2000 followers. Um, and if I'm being honest, I didn't get paid until I had maybe like 11,000 or 12,000 followers. I didn't start out wanting to get paid. The fact that I was getting free clothes sent to me to shoot and I could keep that like blew my mind. But if you're someone that knows that you want to get paid, for your content creation, I think that's 100% okay for you to have your rate card in your media kit, no matter what the number of followers that you have. If you're a content creator, you should 100% be getting paid for your work, whether it's $10 for a photo, $20, $50 for a photo, that's just my opinion. But don't get discouraged if for a little bit brands decide that they only wanna do gifting with you. You have to build your yourself and your brand some way, somehow, so you might as well just take the gifting just to help build your brand in the first place. So like I said, in the beginning, brand outreach is super important. It's important for you to get your name out there, to get these brands to know who you are and know the type of content that you can create. You also wanna figure out what type of content you wanna shoot. Are you gonna be shooting on an iPhone? Are you gonna be shooting on a high-res camera? I shoot like 99% of my photos on my iPhone. I have some film photos on there just because I bought myself a film camera and I'm starting to dabble with that. Um, also, one of my good friends who's a photographer, Madison, um, you guys seen her if you watched the vlogs before. She's a professional photographer and she has taken some of my photos before on her film camera and her high-res camera. But I guess just figuring out what's gonna be easier for you if you are gonna take pictures with a camera or an iPhone. I just chose iPhone because it's the most convenient for me. That's something that you have to figure out. Okay, so this is a question that I get probably on the daily. How do you grow on Instagram? I wish there was a formula or some magic trick that I can tell you about. I think every person's experience is different in terms of growing on Instagram. We all know that the algorithm changes all the time on Instagram, kind of throwing us for, you know, for a, a 180. But what helped me in the beginning a lot was obviously posting consistently. When you start working with brands, creating content that fits well in their feed, because when you have content that, that fits in their feed, your chances of being reposted by the brands are a lot higher. So getting reposted by big brands like Princess Polly, Nasty Gal, For Love and Lemons, that was huge and that gives you so much exposure because some of these brands have millions of followers. Of course you want to create content that speaks to who you are truly, but also kind of tweaking it a little to make sure that 
it fits the brand's aesthetic as well because your chances of getting reposted, like I said, are a lot higher. Another way to grow in terms of reposting is getting reposted by mood board accounts. I didn't realize how beneficial reposts from mood board accounts were until I started getting reposted a lot by mood board accounts. But just tagging these mood board accounts in your photos as if you were tagging the brand is super helpful because if they see your posts and they think that it's a cool post and they want to repost it on their feed, that can give you a lot of exposure as well because these mood board accounts are huge and usually have very high engagement because there's a lot of people that like following mood board accounts because it gives them more fashion inspiration and they see a whole variety of creators other than following just one person you know what i'm saying so getting me posted by mood board accounts is huge and definitely helped me a lot when trying to grow my instagram account now this next tip is using hashtags and i feel like this is also kind of like a touch and go subject because for a while hashtags were huge and critical thing to put in your instagram post to help gain more exposure. Nowadays we're seeing that hashtags sometimes work, they sometimes don't, they could pop off and they can do absolutely nothing for your photo. I still use hashtags on every single photo. Maximum amount of hashtags you can use is 30. There's a website that I go to that finds the best hashtags for um, certain words that you want to post. It's called, I actually, I forget the name of it, but I'll leave the name of the website up here. So basically what you do, you just put in a keyword, like say I have a black dress on, I'll type in black dress and it'll find all of the relevant hashtags that you can post for that particular photo. So that hashtag generator is really important. And sometimes when I've just used the hashtags that the hashtag generator has given me, I've had photos pop off, but again, it's not, it's not that consistent. So you still have to kind of play around with that. Another tip for hashtags is make sure you're using hashtags that are relevant to, to that particular photo. You do not want to use the same hashtags for every single photo because I'm pretty sure Instagram will perceive your account as a bot and you don't want that. So try to use different hashtags for every single photo. In my notes, I've created a whole list um, of like a bunch of different hashtags that I can use for certain photos. Um, so I have like stuff for fall fashion, winter fashion, summer fashion. I have like the Parisian hashtags. I have like YSUK hashtags and stuff like that. I have like a whole note, just so many hashtags. So another tip that I have when trying to gain a following is engage with people in your community. I have made some of my best friends online through the fashion community and friends that I know I'm going to have forever. One of my really good friends lives in Canada. I, I've met some of my best friends here in New York and we all met through Instagram. I have friends that are in LA, Texas, like engaging with people in your community is one. It's just nice and it's also nice to create some friends within this industry because everyone has questions and it's really nice to kind of have people that can relate to you and understand what you're going through and understand the questions that you're having because chances are they've been through it themselves. Engaging with your fellow content creators is not only super supportive um, and you're helping them out, but it creates a nice little community for you. And I think it's really special. Okay, and then my last tip for trying to grow your account on Instagram is to post your photos on Pinterest. You guys, Pinterest can be huge for bringing more exposure to your post and your overall account. What I do is I will go ahead and I'll copy the link to my Instagram post and then I'll upload that same photo onto Pinterest and pasting that URL. It's not gonna happen overnight, but when you start consistently using Pinterest and posting on Pinterest, you can have some photos that pop off, get thousands and thousands of reach thousands of eyes on it and when you have that post linked to your instagram people will click on it and they'll be directed to your instagram post i've had so many photos pop off because they popped off on pinterest so if you're not reposting your photos on pinterest you need to start doing that it will help you a thousand percent you just have to do it and it's good to get yourself out on other platforms as well anyway i will have a whole other video talking about pinterest as well because i think pinterest is super helpful and super important um, when trying to grow on all platforms. Okay, then I guess just some advice that I have. If you're someone that's nervous to start out with content creation and just posting yourself more on Instagram, because that was me. I was so nervous to start posting and even posting talking videos on Instagram and stories and stuff like that. I was so nervous. I was so concerned about what people would think about me. Looking back on it now, if I could give myself advice of me presently, right now, if I can give myself advice back then, I would give myself a little whack and I'd say, why do you care? You're doing this for you to make yourself happy. Why do you care what people are gonna think about you? So what if someone thinks it's weird? Good thing you're not posting for them, you're posting for you. So I guess just telling myself to just not give a f that would have put my mind more at ease, for sure. You just, you can't care what people think because you're doing it for you. And if it's gonna make you happy, 
their opinions shouldn't matter. And I am so happy that I overcame that mindset that I was struggling with for a while because I just look at where I am now and I've grown my account to almost 50,000 followers and like that just blows my mind. It just makes me think, what if I gave in to all those insecurities? I probably wouldn't be here right now. I probably wouldn't have the account that I have, the job that I have. So I think just kind of getting over that fear and getting over yourself a little bit <laughs> because I also think that people aren't thinking about you as much as you think they're thinking about you, which is also very liberating in my opinion. Like, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> But their world and what they're thinking about doesn't revolve around you. So what you're doing, it doesn't affect them. If they actually care about what you're doing, then that's their own issue. What they think about you is none of your business. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, so here are some questions that I got from you guys. Some of these I'm gonna be answering in other videos in this series, but I figured I'd just get um, some questions out of the way now. Photography tips, please. How to afford new outfits. So. In the beginning, I really couldn't afford to buy new clothes, and this was before I was even getting gifted clothes. So I would just try to be very creative with what I already had in my closet. I would be posting a lot of like minimalist outfits. So before you go out and think that you have to buy a whole new wardrobe, see what you already have, because I'd be surprised with how many outfits you can create with pieces that's already in your wardrobe. Um, okay, another question is, how do you get people to notice you? So I kind of went through that on, I guess, the tips on how to grow. How to improve engagement rate. Okay, so what helps a lot to improve engagement rate is, like I said before, engaging with people in your community. Nine times out of ten, if you're engaging on someone's post and, and they see that, they'll usually show the love back, which is why I think engaging on the people that you follow, engaging on their posts is really important, but also going on your explore page and engaging with creators on there as well, I think is important. Another easy thing to do, every comment that you get on your Instagram post respond to it because that helps increase engagement as well okay so how to work with brands and how do you find brands to work with so like i said before you're gonna want to email them or if you can't find the email you're gonna want to dm them another way to get brands to notice you what i did in the beginning um like for example for love and lemons i wanted to work with for love and lemons so badly i went out and i bought a couple pieces from them i used my own money and then i just shot some content and i basically sent them everything that i shot and pitched them basically saying, hey, this is what I can do. My audience responded really well to, my, to this content and I feel like we can work really well together. I feel like I can create really good content for you. Um, are you open to a gifting collaboration? I did that with a couple brands in the beginning, the brands that I really wanted to work with. When you just start posting their stuff um, and tagging them, they're, they're gonna notice you. And then DMing them as well, emailing them as well, showing them what you can do, what you can create, can really help your chances of these brands wanting to work with you. So what does your planning and scheduling look like? Do you have a template or do you wing it? So I actually made a video talking all about my my work schedule as a full-time content creator. I will leave a link to that video in the description box below. I think that was pretty helpful for you guys because I got a lot of DMs from you guys saying that it kind of helped you stay organized. So definitely check that video out. How do you start working with bigger brands even when you were under 10K? Like I said before, I think just tagging them in a lot of photos of course wearing their their pieces and then just creating content that i think would, that would relate to them and look good in their feed um i think that's what helps me get noticed a lot too and when you start kind of getting that momentum and you start working with a lot of brands other brands will start to notice and will want to reach out to you as well. Best advice for someone wanting to do full-time content creating. Um, you're gonna have to hustle for a while. When I had my full-time job as a medical device rep, I obviously had my nine to five job during the week. The weekends were all content creation and doing things for Instagram, doing things for YouTube, TikTok. I basically didn't have a break and I still don't have a break. So I guess just understanding that you're probably really gonna have to hustle for a while until you can, until you feel comfortable enough to take, take content creation full time. You know, I would shoot before work, I would shoot after work. It definitely was a grind, but I think it 100% paid off in the end. And if you truly wanna take this full time, do not be afraid to give a brand your rate card no matter how many followers you have. If you are serious about monetizing your account and making this your full-time job, you can't be afraid to give brands your right card. Where do you get your inspo from? So I think this is in terms of content creation. So I get my inspiration from everywhere. I get it from the seasons. I get it from runways, trends. I get it from my fellow bloggers. I get so much inspo from Pinterest. Pinterest is like a huge mood board for the things that you like. Yeah, I, I take inspiration if I travel somewhere. There's so many places where you can get inspiration from. Okay, these are the last two questions. Do you have a manager? When did you get one? Was it helpful? So no, I do not have a manager. I have been reached out by a couple of agencies that have wanted to represent me, but I don't think that I'm ready for an agency yet. I do find managing all of my own emails and collaborations and stuff like that. I just, I don't think that I'm 
I don't think I need it, honestly. Okay, this is the last question. I think it's a good one. Should I post what's in trend or what I really want my audience to see? I think you just post whatever you like. Honestly, if you're in an outfit that you don't like, but you think it's what your audience is gonna vibe well with, I personally think that you can kind of see the inauthentic, you can kind of see how inauthentic that is. So I think just stay true to yourself because people wanna see the real you, the true you, the genuine you. And if you're just posting things because you think other people want that, I don't know, it just doesn't seem genuine to me. So I think just do you, post what you want and you're gonna, build a community and a following that like seeing that because you like posting it you know what i'm saying it's more authentic to you yeah it's fun to incorporate trends and whatnot and put your own twists on trends but if you're just posting things because you think another person's gonna hit that like button i don't i don't see the point in that and i don't think that can last long term okay guys okay i feel like that was kind of a long video but that was the first episode of this whole helpful tips and tricks series on how to become a content creator or Instagram influencer. I have so many videos planned for you guys to help answer the questions that I always get. Um, so I feel like this is going to be a really helpful series for you guys. If you have any questions, please, please make sure to leave me a comment down below. I'm always talking to you guys down there. You can always DM me over on my Instagram as well if you have a question. And when you're over there, you might as well just hit the follow button if you want. <laughs> and yeah, if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified every time i post a new video and yeah i guess i will just see you guys in the next one